Welcome to another video walkthrough of CalAg permits. This video will cover the step-by-step -step procedure of how to enter and submit a Notice of Intent, also known as an NOI. A Notice of Intent allows your Ag Commissioner enough time to review the proposed application of a restricted material. Please refer to your permit to find the submission timing requirements for Notices of Intent. Let's start a new NOI. Go to the home page and in the area labeled NOIs, click on Enter a new Notice of Intent. You will then be taken to the website's online NOI form where you can fill in all of the appropriate information just as you would on a traditional paper form. Start at the top of the page and fill in all of the orange boxes. Many of the green boxes are optional. If a box has a small arrow, you must select your correct information from the drop-down menu. Typing it in without selecting it from the drop-down will result in errors. Click on the arrow for Operator ID Permit Number and select your information. For the purposes of these videos, we are using our fictitious entity, Friday Farms. Next, we'll enter the date and time of our proposed application. We're going to make our application on September 30th at 8 a.m. As you select items from the drop-down menus and type in your information, many of the other fields such as permittee and location will be populated automatically with information drawn directly from your permit. Next, let's indicate the location where the application is going to take place by choosing our site from the drop-down menu. We're going to make the application at Site 11K1. Then, we'll choose the commodity and amount we're planning to treat. Friday Farms is going to treat a portion of its wine grapes at this site. Let's choose wine grapes. Then, let's indicate we're going to treat approximately 5 acres of the total 80 at this site. Indicate the fume code or application method by selecting it from the drop-down menu. We're going to make a ground application. Next, we must fill in the applicator license slash name field. Friday Ferris has a private applicator certificate. Let's choose it from the drop-down menu. We can minimize our search by entering a portion of the license holder name or license number. Let's enter Friday to pare down the menu. Once we find our license, let's select it. In the proposed pesticide product field, we have to select our product from a master list in the drop-down menu. This list contains over 50,000 products linked directly to the Department of Pesticide Regulations database of registered products. To pare this list down to something more manageable, you can enter a portion of the product name or EPA number. For this example, let's enter a portion of the name. Friday Farms is planning on using a phostoxin product. Let's enter phostox and see how many results we get. Looks like we have a list of 15 products. That's so much easier to now find the one we're actually going to use. Let's select it, 72959-4-ZB. Next, we can indicate the rate of application and how much we plan on treating. Friday Farms plans on treating 40 burrows across the 5 acres with 3 grams per burrow. A little arithmetic and we've got 120 total grams applied to 5 acres. Using the drop-down menu, let's choose our target pest, gophers. Once all of the required information has been filled in, you need to save each line by clicking on the Save Line button. Saved lines will appear in the lower green area. From there, the line can be edited or deleted before the NOI is submitted. Be sure to include your name and date of submission at the bottom of the form. Each time you click a Save Line button, the program tries to help by beginning to fill out a new line for you. Once you have filled out and saved every line of the report, click Clear Line to clear out this extra information. If you are not finished with the report and want to continue working on it at a later time, click Save Draft. Remember, this does not submit the, the report to the county. You will have to go back and do that later. Once all of the lines have been correctly added to the form, send the completed report to your local Ag Commissioner as an official document by clicking on Submit Report. The report will also be saved and available for you to review at any time. If you receive a pop-up window indicating you have errors, you can either return to the report and correct errors line by line, otherwise the report will be saved as a draft. You cannot submit this report until the errors are corrected. 
If all the information is entered correctly, once submitted, you will receive a pop-up window indicating your report was successfully sent to your Ag Commissioner. Thank you for joining us for another video on navigating CalAg permits. We hope you find them helpful.